Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Tournament Center here at Pro Tour Cons of Tarkir in Honolulu, Hawaii. I'm Brian David Marshall. I am joined by Pro Tour Born of the Gods Top 8 competitor and Grand Prix Barcelona champion Christian Seibold. And Christian, I have to thank you. <laughs> thank I have you to thank too. you because you gave me the deck that I'll be playing at FNM <laughs> for the next month or so. Um, tell, tell us how you came by the deck and who you worked with for this event. And then we'll, we'll show people some of the cards real quick. Actually, our team, uh, Pony Soldier, worked a lot of, with the deck, especially uh, Oliver Polar Grockman, who kind of invented the deck and put a lot of time in testing the deck and building the right list. And Thomas Gleed also uh, helped a lot with the deck. And we were sitting there like one week and discussing every evening, like what can we bring in, etc. Okay, so the deck is called Widisi. <laughs> uh, and I guess that stands for Whip of Erebos and our single card spotlight here, <laughs> Sidisi Blood Brood Tyrant. So tell, tell me about uh, Sidisi and why she makes the deck tick so well. Well, it's kind of the card you wanted for the deck. I remember in Proto Atlanta, we played like a junk reanimation version and we played all four, all four um, mana base was like Polychronos and Reaper. And now we have Sidisi. It's just does everything. It puts cards in your graveyard, what you want of the deck, which can, you can reanimate with the whip or using for murderous card. And by itself, it's like a four mana, five power, and right. it isn't the end there. <laughs> uh, how many creatures do you feel like you have to play in a deck with the DC to make sure that you're gonna, you know, every time you flip over three cards, you're gonna hit a creature? Well, I, we didn't like mathematically uh, thought about it, just how many spells we, we do need, and then we thought about four murderous card and the other removal, and then the rest were creatures. Okay, so, I mean, even if you're not hitting them, sometimes just putting spells in your graveyard can be useful. Let's take a look at some of the cards that uh, you're using with Sidisi. Do we see the murderous cut you've mentioned? I imagine this spell often just costs B for you. Yeah, that's great, yeah. <laughs> You know, if you've played UCDC, if you had a chance to attack, you have six extra cards in your yard that's yeah. not counting fetch lands or anything else. It's like the best card to, to follow on because sometimes you get behind and then casting two spells in a row is right. like really uh, great. We just saw you on camera, you know, Heroes Downfall something. That was the extra card in your graveyard that let you pay three mana and, you know, remove some cards to murderous cut the other creature and attack for the win. Yeah. Uh, Whip of Erebos. Uh, four Whip of Erebos. Yes. We haven't seen decks really with four whips yeah. in a while. You need those. <laughs> you want to draw you want to draw a whip, and even if you draw two, it doesn't really matter because opponents sometimes have removal. And you need to draw the whip. It's like the card which ends the game when it's resolved. One activation is mostly enough. Uh, and Soul of Innistrad, just one in the deck. But I, I watched, again, watched you with this card. Like, you know, you played against deck, removed creatures, removed creatures, you milled some creatures, and then you know, you had a Soul of Innistrad, which was the last creature standing for you, and then you're like, grab three cards out of my graveyard and start restocking my hand. It seems wonderfully powerful. Yeah, it's like the perfect one-off because at some point you will mill to it or draw it, and then it's additional to the whip. It's like perfect card to bring your creatures back. And by itself, it's a 6-6 six -six death touch. Right, <laughs> it's just huge. All right, let's take a look at some more of the cards in deck. Some of the things that you're bringing back with the whip, uh, Hornet Queen, that seems like almost the ideal target for Death yeah. Touch creatures yeah, get left behind. We thought about the format and we thought either have the Hornet Queen or beat the Hornet Queen. So <laughs> we need four Hornet Queens and that's the reason why the deck is good. And, and you really might have eight or ten Hornet Queens in this <laughs> yeah. deck. Uh, Sagu Mauler, this is also an interesting card. Tell me why, why is this a one-of in your deck? It's kind of funny because when we were testing the deck I said, man, we need some more threats and we thought about which threats we can have. and. This is like the perfect, perfect threat. When it's resolved, it's so hard. It's only like Crackling Doom who can destroy it. And by itself, it's a 6-6 six, six, uh, morph, uh, trample hexproof, and sometimes you can even morph it and attack saw, turn proof. I saw so. you slide it in under a disdainful stroke, yeah. where you, mor you, you morphed <laughs> it down and then unmorphed yeah. it and just beat your opponent up yeah. around the neck and, and shoulders with it. Then the game was over, yeah. yeah, against black blue control, yeah. So let's take a look. Uh, this is a, a pretty standard set of cards with the addition of Seder Wayfinder to give you more graveyard fuel. Yeah. Wayfinder is a good card because it fills the graveyard and looking for the right lands or the mana base is perfectly with Wayfinder, Elvish Mystic, and Sylvan Caratude. And then Corsair Crucifix is kind of a little extra nice with yeah, CDC. You get to see maybe one card that you're milling <laughs> yeah. away. You get to make a little bit more of a decision, possibly. Yeah, you have to make a lot of decisions with those cards like Wayfinder, Scrylands, and Cursor, and Fetchlands, and CDC. Yeah. 
Okay, let's take a look at the mana base for this deck. Oh, actually, we have a little bit more removal. <laughs> yeah. Two heroes downfall yeah. uh, and uh, silence the believers. Yeah. So that rounds out the, the spell portion. Right, we just wanted to run like at least seven removal and four murders because weren't enough. So downfalls, which can handle a Elspeth, it could be an eyeing or a Sarkhan. And silence the believers is a great card because usually you have in the game like seven mana and then it's a two for one or even killing gods sometimes. This, this also gets a Sarkhan, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> exile. So that's pretty sweet. All right, let's take a look at the at the lands. Four Temple of Malady, four Land of War Waste, Polluted Delta and Wooded Foothills gives you an extra little extra, yeah, extra graveyard cards. Extra yeah. graveyard cards. Take a look at the in the basic lands, uh, the next set of cards, uh, four Opulent Palace, a Coast, and then seven basics. Yeah. So I mean that's it. This I'm, I'm honestly, if you find me at a store next week playing Magic, I'm going to be playing this deck. <laughs> it looks awesome. Widisi. This, this is the deck. If you, if you like playing with cards out of your graveyard, this is the deck for you. For Christian Seibold, this is Brian David Marshall signing off from the Tournament Center.